All right, back in the studio here. And, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking, um, basically because all I do is think and, and work with tools and stuff. And I uh, wanted to start to get away from some of the theory uh, and, and get to uh, more practical stuff. And so I decided that this evening I would give you uh, my ideas on flipping, okay, what I call flipping. And, you know, I used to have Woody, uh, and my wife kind of got pissed because, you know, we're, we're redoing this room. I don't know if you can tell how it's changed. I you know, painted everything, hardwood floors, all good. Got lights up here. It's cost me a lot of money, but hey, what the heck, it's just money. So instead of Woody, I've got Slim here. Now, if you look at Slim, it's just a piece of wood. It's got a triangle. But the triangle is about, you know, it's, it's about where your breast breastplate is on a, it's a little bit lower, actually. And, and, you know, this is going all the way back to Boston College, the way they used to coach us. Um, what you want to do, this is the V, this is the grab, okay? In order to flip somebody, you have to grab them, okay? Now, believe me when I tell you, this, this is what makes us human, okay? The pronation and supination of our wrists. So we can grab things different ways. You know, I can do that, okay? I can do that, I can do this, I can, you know, whatever, whatever I want to do. Okay, but when we're flipping, we want to grab, okay, and you can grab the armpit and the breastplate, you can grab with one hand, okay, if you have, if you have mixed hands, okay, but what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about the two-handed grab and flip, okay, and Slim is our guy. Now, I've been trying to demonstrate this scooting and sprawling, okay, and, uh, Basically, the, the, the thing that we're talking about is getting or inducing a teeter, okay? Now, to me, a teeter, it's just a word that we use. It's when your feet are not holding you up, they're behind you, okay? They're behind you, right? They're not under you, they're behind you, okay? And if, if, I, if I'm confident enough, I'll get my feet pretty much behind me. Now, it doesn't look like it's real behind me, but my center of gravity is way out in front of my feet. Okay, and I'm trying to play chest over thigh with all the good things that you've learned over the years. Okay, but I am sprawled. My feet are behind me. Okay, and if you if you if you if you want to go and get some of these tire flipping videos, I, initially I was saying put your feet right under you where you're lifting, but they don't. They sprawl. They have their feet way back and they flip the tire, they flip it. Now we're talking about Slim here. Slim, yep, he's a lever. And what I'm doing is I'm jamming Slim into the crotch of the wall, and that's the fulcrum. So this is the, the fulcrum. Slim's big butt, okay, is the load and Slim's chest is the handle for the lever. And what we do, what we try to do is get ourselves into a sprawl. Now, if we're, if we're matching a green light, and we don't have to get in front of the guy, okay? All we do is downshift. And if he two gaps us, a two-hand grab is as good as anything. Okay, in other words, the guy, if we're trying to scoot to a guy who's out here, we want to use mixed hands. We want to hold the door open to see if we can get a grab. And the reason we did that was we felt, you know, a lot of people, you know, last night I was talking about having an angle on somebody. But we found that if we could get the ball outside the three technique, it really put a lot of pressure on the defense. So we, we came up with the scoot, and the scoot was how you get in front of a guy who's not in front of you. Okay, so the single thing, you step deep, you sprawl, and you scoot over. You scoot over to get in front and get your head, your, your strike, your helmet strike past this. Okay, so that's scoot. We've already gone over that. There's a video about scoot. What I want to talk about now is just this flipping. Now, again, sprawling starts with the big tree. And all the big tree is, 
again, is, is a force vector going this way. When we sprawl, a force vector is going, guess which way? It's going at about 45 degrees, okay? And we want to be in the big tree as much as we can because what that does is it lets us, with our knees out, it lets us get our hips in line with the force vector and get our feet flat on the ground. We need the friction and resistance from the ground in order to make force, okay, to get movement. Now, the type of movement we're talking about, you know, everybody likes, everybody talks about, you know, road grade, we're not. We're saying that if I'm, if I'm facing a guy who's making negative force, okay, in other words, I'm making positive force, he's making negative force, I don't want to bang my head into him. I don't want to try and drive. It's, it's a zero-sum equation, okay, unless I'm way better than him, which most guys, you know, like, yeah, I do it too. I, I take all the good clips and I make a video and I say, see, this is how you do it. But this is just, you know, this is just the way we've done it over the years. We used to call it lifting. And like I covered last night, it's really not lifting. Lifting means your feet are under you and you're taking the guy off the ground. Well, as soon as you take this guy off the ground, he's not a tool anymore. He's just a guy. Okay? With his feet on the ground as a fulcrum and he is giving you negative force, he's holding you up right now. This, this thing is holding me up. And if I can do this, okay, and run my feet, Okay, we always take small steps because we don't want to give up the friction, the mechanical attachment to the ground. In other words, if you take a very big step, you might get away with it, but your feet are in the air too long. Okay, and you're really on one leg. One leg isn't good. Okay, but what you want to do is get him in that, you know, in that V position. Grab him. You're grabbing him with two hooks. Okay. And this is, this is a guy that we don't care about getting in front of him, okay? We're matching him, and we have an angle on him. We have leverage on him, okay? Right? In other words, the ball's being run right here. We want to stretch this guy. We have an angle. We're winning right now. We have an angle. We have a lot of advantages, okay? But we still got to get this guy stretched. So what we want to do is downshift to him. If he two gaps us, we want to get that grab, okay, and the medicine balls were designed and the meatballs were designed to keep your hands tight, okay, keep your hands together, and if you can get this grab, a two-handed grab, and I don't care, like I said, if you get the breastplate, the armpit, okay, you can take this dude and flip him up, and once you flip him up, flip him up, guess what? You can drive him. You can push him. You can throw. Okay, he's not. He's no longer. He can't make negative force on you. Okay, now he might throw his feet back. Okay, or he might be really good, and where you want, to, you want to take him and do this to him and tear him. Okay. Okay, but in any event, we'll slim here as a lever. His feet are on the ground. That's important. Okay, because you want that fulcrum so that you can use mechanical advantage. And again, when you go to throw this, grab this guy, you want to grab him, and ideally you, you want your arm to hit him at 90 degrees. Why? Because 90 degrees of force input to a lever is the most efficient. And remember, a lever magnifies your force. Okay, if, if you were thinking about this, if, if I had a big old rock here, a big old 300 pound rock, and I had to pick it up, that'd be tough. But if I put it on top of old Slim, and Slim was a little sturdy, I could, I could flip it up very easily. Okay, so what we want to do is get that input into Slim's chest. And what's great about this is, because, because we have a mechanical advantage, we can do a lot of this with just our upper body. Okay, and once we get him flipped up, he's, he's toast. Now, if the guy's really good and he's playing really long and it's hard for you to get him because he's getting you, okay, that's, this is where we get into these types of things. Okay, in other words, you can't get him, so, okay.
Take, take one. You can't get him. He's, he's got his hands on your chest. You're, you, you can't get that foot pos position right away. Okay? So get it on the side by making yourself longer with one hand. Okay? And throw him. And then go in there and grab him. And to tell you the truth, if you are scooting a guy, okay, I'm trying to get to the outside of him, and I go to scoot him with, with, with my jab hand, and he too gaps me, well, there's nothing wrong with grabbing him. He's blocking himself. You're trying to get here, well, he's helping you. That's, that's great. And if he, keep, if he keeps going, you stuff him to the next guy, and off we go. But this guy is a tool. It's called a class two lever, okay? Or second class lever. I keep messing that up. You know, like I said, I'm a mechanic. I'm not a, I'm not a physicist. I mean, I'm just a, I don't even know if I'm a mechanic. I, I build stuff though. Okay, I, build, I just built this. I built a little slim right here. Anyway, once again, 90 degrees if you can get it, okay? You got the fulcrum, the feet on, you're flipping him up. And now you got them. Okay? That's grabbing and flipping. That's how it works. Okay? That's all I got for tonight.